could you give me a kind of a patient profiles? Which of the patients or what kind of tumors are more prone to be um, candidates uh, for BRCA or the anti-BRCA mutational treatments like with PARP inhibitors? Actually, BRCA mutations are quite rare in all breast cancer patients. It's only about 5% of all breast cancer patients who do carry a mutation. And we have good predictors for that. For example, a family history of breast and or ovarian cancer, so if a relative has breast or ovarian cancer, is predictive of the patient having a mutation as well. Um, what exactly would be a candidate for the EMBRACA study with one of the uh, PARP inhibitors which are being tested in the framework, framework of a study at the moment? Yeah, the EMBRACA study uh, mainly concerns with metastatic breast cancer patients. So these are usually patients that got a treatment in the adjuvant setting of breast cancer. So the tumor comes back and um, usually BRCA testing hasn't been included into therapy selection yet. So now they come back and are in the first, second, third line metastatic setting. And these are the patients that are actually suitable to be included into that study if they are BRCA positive. So up until now, the only possibilities which we have in these patients are obviously chemotherapy, either with anthracyclines or with taxanes or with capecitabine or with vinorelbine. So uh, this is a new possibility if a patient has such a metastatic disease to tell her that she's a candidate for uh, the EMBRACA study, correct? That's correct, yeah. And are these studies based on any knowledge from previous studies? You know, to get to a phase three study, you have to do all kinds of previous testing in preclinical models like cell culture models and animals models, and you have to complete studies in uh, far advanced breast cancer patients, studies in other solid tumors. So we're quite excited uh, that the therapy is available in that situation within a study, and we have to keep in mind there's a two to one randomization, so the chance that the patient will get on the drug is actually higher than not getting on the drug, and giving all the data that we already have about these treatments in BRCA-positive patients, we're quite, quite excited that we already can offer it within a study. I mean, obviously the patients are asking uh, the question, what are the possible side effects of this new type of drug? So what the patients report mainly is a kind of a fatigue, you know, that's what they mainly report on when they're under the therapy, but it's well tolerable. And the other side effect are mainly on the blood, so you have to take care of the side effects on the blood, the blood cell count will go down. Uh, neutropenia, leukopenia, but these are actually uh, good to be controlled. So um, these are the main side effects you have to take care of during the therapy, besides some other ones that are rarer. Now with uh, the knowledge from the first day of the uh, St. Gallen consensus meeting here in Vienna, and after this interactive talk with Professor Fasching from Erlangen, I'm more than convinced that when I go home I will try to convince more physicians and more patients to uh, participate in this trial.